guys, here you go. The running ultrasonic a little bit higher amplitude. We're seeing this climb like a banshee right now. So the vibrational frequency is important. And again, the water's dancing much more intensely. I think I put this uh, machine on a slightly higher setting. And you can see the, the voltage climbing. It's all over the place, actually. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Time will tell. Here we are now. Bounces all over the place. So I think what we're probably seeing is the salts may have come off the electrodes and not getting a perfect seal down there. So with the cooling of this, um, I think it's going to be important the next time I do this to really mash this down so I have a, a more dense fill. Um, that would explain the anomalous voltage readings with with this. So time will tell. Okay guys, this is about a minute later and we're now back up to this voltage here. I'm just holding deeper so the copper electrode definitely is submerged in the water. So the interface of the copper and the magnesium and the relationship to one another has to be subject to the vibration, the ultrasonic vibration. So now we're back up to last night's voltage. And this has only been in the bath for approximately eight minutes total. And we'll see if it holds the charge, but if nothing else, there you can see if the copper and the magnesium are both submerged in the ultrasonic, the piezoelectric effect is there, so they both have to be, I think, in fairly close proximity. Hey guys, here's it um, out of the ultrasonic bath, and it's just sort of sitting there, and the voltage is rising on its own. So the ultrasonic can rejuvenate it. Sort of an interesting phenomenon, so seeing the voltage rise now could be the ultrasonic um, has imparted enough thermal kinetic energy into this to make the voltage increase, which is possible. Um, we'll see where it goes. Here you guys go. The battery X is a thermal pile for sure, so it's sitting in the sun, and it went from dead zero this morning up to 1.7 when I put the ultrasonic. Now I'm just trying it in the sun. It was dead zero, and now if you can see it rising with just ambient sunlight warmth. So it's still low voltage, um, but it'll be interesting to see what she climbs to. I just put it in the sun right now, for what it's worth. Okay, guys, it's Dive Fly Fish. Just wanted to let you know. This is my test cell number three, the one that died last night. Um, in any event, I just got done heating it up with this uh, small micro torch, trying to heat you know, the crystalline element again. And notice what I see here. I thought the cell was anhydrous. Obviously not. So even with trapped moisture, the action of this as a thermopile is fine and now again the voltage is up high because I just warmed this up with a blowtorch but again it dissipated to zero but there is trapped water here without a doubt so John is correct this is still um, galvanic perhaps and lid motor you are correct there is not an anhydrous environment even though I do have a molecular sieve here I was hoping that the absorption from the molecular sieve would have taken care of all this water but again you see categorical 100 percent proof of water vapor and water molecules in the inside of this uh, gathering towards the desiccant so for what it's worth again we have an increase in voltage so we've revived the cell vis-a-vis -vis heat I'm going to try to heat this up and see if there's any way I can have the molecular sieve take this out of the equation down here and we'll go from there so I thought you might find this interesting. I thought I'd heated this up to where it was desiccated completely, but if you see, I'm heating up this test cell, and you'll see the water coming off of it. In just a moment.
You can see the steam coming off it now. I don't know if you guys can pick it up on the YouTube, but there is steam coming off this. See it right there? So suffice it to say, what I thought was anhydrous really wasn't. I think we need to get this much hotter, as JB has alluded to, with regard to his kiln-fabricated uh, crystal. So, in any event, I'm driving off the rest of the water molecule, which I thought I had accomplished last night, but obviously was not the case. So the voltage is actually going down as I desiccate this battery. And again, that's uh, reinforcing of what John was saying. So. I do not believe that these cells, as they are being fabricated, is a truly solid state. Because at the stove I was not able to get this, but I'm applying a much greater intense heat adjacent to this crystalline structure. And I'm just going to take this to see how hot I can get it to see if it turns into something different. So I'll keep you up to date, but suffice to say this is my crystal cell number three that I've now destroyed by blowing out the epoxy seal, which you can see is uh, rather discolored, and it is emanating steam. So I think we need a higher intensity heat to accomplish our goal. So for what it's worth, this was the functioning exquisitely sensitive thermocouple that I've now somewhat destroyed with the higher heat application.